Warren Hastings, you get the impression, would have been a wonderful guy to have at dinner. He said, I love India more than my own country. And his whole approach was to maintain Indian customs and traditions as much as possible, which was very different from Clive. He ran it in a very different way with a lot of in respect for Indian cultural traditions. British victories in the South, which um, Hastings was indirectly responsible for, did then increase territorial influence because what happened when the British won battles against regional warlords was that they filled the political vacuum that had been left. But it was not his intention to do that. And his intention always was that British rule should remain as indirect as possible and that Indians should be left to administer Indians. From 1765, when they win the Battle of Buxar and, and really get complete control over the whole of Eastern India, to about 1774, about a decade, they reduce Bengal to a dust bowl and a third of the population of Bengal dies in 1770. The company, which controls 50% of British exports, suddenly finds itself bankrupt because there's a famine in Bengal, this land which has been providing enormous revenues is suddenly completely barren. There's people are dying in the streets. And share, the share price of the company bombs, banks go bankrupt like dominoes across Europe. Uh, and the British government has to bail it out because the East India Company is too big to fail. And from that point, it becomes a partly nationalised company. Well, I don't think it's a moral issue because it was normal. Um, in the pre-20th uh, century world for people from certain parts of the world to rule people from other parts of the world. That was the nature of empire building, which everyone aspired to. The Aztecs did it in South America, the Chinese did it in the Far East, the Russians did it across the whole of Central Asia, the idea that nationalities built around language and ethnicity should be separate states was a late 19th century, early 20th century idea which only came into its own after World War I. And then the final, I suppose, change happens under the Marquis Wellesley, who is the elder brother of the Duke of Wellington. And he comes in in 1798, and he's the first man who actively makes a decision in his own head I'm going to go out and conquer as much of Indian territory as I can. And in two massive wars, first against Tipu Sultan in the south in 1799, then against the Marathas in 1802-3, he actually conquers more of India than Napoleon conquers of Europe. It's not an easy process for the British. You know, they lose a lot of battles as well as win. You know, kind of they, um, and the reason why they extend their power sim simply has to do with the fact that they have more resources. They have access to global money markets in a way that Indian states don't. So, so you know, if they lose, they can go and get loans from the City of London and come back, etc. And it leads to British power extending in quite a haphazard way, actually. There's no um, systematic, stable form of government. And I think what happens in the... 1820s, 1830s, 1840s is that you have this period of instability. We see this period often as a period of kind of consolidation, but it's not easy consolidation. There are still great challenges. Um, there, there's still rebellion, you know, rebellions occurring. So I think the kind of there is a moment that occurs in kind of maybe the 1840s where the British begin to, begin to become more confident about about the, about, and it really is that late about being able to effectively dominate India, being this kind of imperial force throughout the whole of Indian society. The East India Company's rise and decline in power was a key part in Britain and India's history and led to the British government increasing their involvement. The 1857 Indian Rebellion spread across all sectors of society and led to increased fight back from the British against the rebels, ensuring the EIC's victory and their demise. And governance of India was passed to the British crown where Victoria became the new Empress of India. A new age begins.